good morning. Okay, sorry, I'm a little bit late today because of um, technical difficulties, something wrong with my Facebook, but it's okay. We're all good. We're still here. I'm still here. So anyway, I hope everyone's having a wonderful Saturday. It's 10 o'clock, around 10 o'clock over here in Hawaii. Hi. And Probably some of you is already in the afternoon. Some of you might be even Sunday over there where you're at. But anyway, thank you so much for being here. So today, um, I think I'm going to talk about supplements for ADHD because I was kind of screening over some of the posts from inside the group and I saw a lot of questions about that. So I'm going to talk about that. I'll try to answer some questions because of the the way things are set up today because Facebook is not using my camera so I might not have all the questions that I want to answer here but I'll try uh, yeah I probably will have to screen okay this one anyone have fish oil have a fish oil they recommend or that they use specifically for kids. My five-year-old can't quite swallow pills, something gel yet. Oh, soft gel, okay. Yeah, fish oil. So fish oil is definitely one of the first ADHD, uh, first supplements that I recommend for all of my patients. And the reason why is because fish oil is one of the supplements that is actually most studied and the safest one and the reason why we we want to use fish oil is because also fish oil is a significant source of omega-3 fatty acid um, dha and epa so and the other thing also is that we don't or most people do not know is that our brain our human brain is actually about eight to ten percent omega-3 fatty acid so that's the, kind of the benefit of fish oil it's not really because were part of the fish but it's just because fish oil is such a great source of omega-3 fat uh, great source of omega-3 fatty acid and also the other thing that i think i talked about last week is one of the causes of adhd is that the brain is behind especially in children so thinking along of like developmental how to promote the catch-up growth in the brain we're trying to figure out if the brain is slightly smaller and behind, then we need to feed the nutrients that the body will need to create more, more new tissue to support growth. So omega-3 fatty acid definitely is one of the things that you should consider. And to answer this question, anyone have any recommendation for fish oil? And yes, I do. And um, actually, if you go to my blog, natural dash alternative-adhd-treatment.com I know it's a long word but it's probably somewhere on Instagram in the link in Instagram and also in Facebook you should be able to find it if not I'll put it in the comment below but anyway so um, I do have several different fish oil supplements that I do recommend normally and but the ones that I recommend and actually I use it myself as well is um, the Carson here can you see so this is the fish oil that i use a lot of people what i see from the post that i see a lot is that people just buy anything that says omega-3 or they buy the smarty pants that have that claim they have dha or omega-3 but the problem is you're gonna be so disappointed when you get those things because um let me go back a little bit to a recommendation for omega-3 fatty acid so Sorry, I'm talking a little bit fast today because I'm trying to squeeze in as much stuff I can in the time we have left. Um, yeah, so going back a little bit on the omega-3 fatty acid recommendation. So again, omega-3 fatty acid, there are actually multiple of them, but the ones that we try to focus more on with the um, ADHD side is the DHA and EPA. So the recommendation for the DHA is about 500 milligrams a day. There's no recommendation, there's no government recommendation for how much DHA or EPA the human body needs. 
but the recommendation is all based on research study with um, omega-3 fatty acid on the each uh, on people with ADHD so you want at least like 500 milligrams of DHA or EPA and then depending on what <coughs> symptoms you have <coughs> the DHA is a little bit more towards trying to have the focus more focus and then the EP is more for the mood and emotions so anyway so I did mention DHA EPA of about 500 milligrams each so <coughs> excuse me so if you have a bottle of your multivitamins like the smarty pants or whatever other vitamins that claims to have omega-3 fatty acid you can take it out and go along with me or you can do it later but I'm going to read the nutrition label together over here with both of you. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm live on both Instagram and Facebook. So, okay, you might or might not be able to see it, but I'm going to read it out to you. So remember, ooh, this one is not out there. Okay, so, what was I going to say? Um, so 500 milligrams, that were what we're looking for. So when you look at the nutrition label, you're going to go down, look at your serving size. So serving size is about 5 ml or 1 teaspoon, which is not a lot. Um, and then I skip through everything. The only thing I care about is the DHA and EP in that 5 milligrams or 1 teaspoon. So in here, according to the bottles, it has 4 point. 4.6 grams of Norwegian fish oil. Okay, I don't really care where the fish comes from because you see this brand, Carson is a really good brand. Everything is purified, like no mercury, blah, blah, blah. So we can trust that. So I don't really care about the total omega-3 fatty acids. It's not that important to me. What was more important is that the two numbers under the EPA and the DHA. So in here, the EPA, I think the camera's over here. The EPA, oh, it's kind of fuzzy, but it's okay. I'll keep reading. Okay, in here, the Carlson, one teaspoon, you get about 800 milligrams of EPA and 500 milligrams of DHA. So that's the amount that you're looking for. So that's why I recommend this. If you look at a bottle of the Smarty Pants Omega-3 Fatty Acid or the Oli, all those brands that I see all the time that are useless, um, you probably need 15 to 20 of the gummies a day to get the same amount of this. I think earlier I saw a question about someone asking, um, asking about, I think, a Smarty Pants that have Omega-3 in it and if they need a separate omega-3 fatty acid um, supplements my answer to that question will be yes if you're taking something like a like a smarty pants or the ollie or any other children's multivitamins that have a sprinkle of omega-3 fatty acid definitely you want to have an additional um, omega-3 source as well okay so that's the question oh i did answer that um okay the next question kind of a question but to me i'm gonna answer it more like a disclaimer because i saw a lot of people asking about different kind of supplements like um what is this one belia so there are three supplements that that no is it three yeah there are three different kind of supplements supplements that i definitely will recommend again so the one is belia I saw a lot of questions on that. The other one is the N NRF2. I saw people try to sell that on inside the group and I tried to um, delete all of those posts. The other one is any kind of CBD oil. And I'll explain a little bit of that. I'm not gonna spend too much time. First of all, the Brillia, there's no research or anything to support it. I read through the literature, the, the website and stuff and I was like, I don't remember reading anything about this particular substance in my biochemistry book, so I don't know how you made up that. And um, I think there's only one study on that particular supplement, and it is um, a study that is, um, 
I didn't pay for it by their own company. Um, so that's the brilliant. So don't waste your money on that. Second one I said is the NRF2. Some of you might have seen in the, the Facebook group, someone try to sell you that. That's another bogus. Delete that. Don't, don't contact that person. Don't um, engage with them. Save your money. Save your heartache. And then the other one, CBD oil. So the CBD oil, I know a lot of people said that they try it, it works, but um, there is no, actually out of all the studies done so far with the CBD oil, only thing approved by the government or the FDA to use the CBD oil or CBD, um, any kind of concoction is really with only seizure disorder. That's the only, only um, condition. And it's also seizure disorder with three rare genetic disorder. Those are the approved use of the, the CBD. Anything else is not recommended. And if you also, and if you also follow um, Dr. Amen, he actually recommend against it as well because CBD do damage your brain, kind of like alcohol. So if you do CBD and alcohol, those things do damage the brain. And you know, we we focus on brain health here. So we don't want you to do anything that harms your brain even more. And just because it's legal now doesn't mean that it is good for you because there's a reason why all this, the CBD, THC, marijuana, all these things have been legal for so many years. It's because there's good reason for that. So, but if you do have a medical condition that definitely CBD helps, then in your case, your benefit outweighs the, the side effects and the damage, then go ahead and do it. But do use it with precaution and with your doctor's supervision, okay? Okay, yeah. Yeah, and even with like the, the comments from this, it's like there's so many people just say it just doesn't work. So don't waste your money. If you, if you keep following me and reading my articles and reading my books and all this stuff, you'll learn, you'll learn so much more from reading, learning from reading all this information from me. And then you'll be able to be a better consumer because you'll understand the condition better and be able to find better choices and take better care of yourself rather than trying random things, kind of like throwing spaghetti at the wall. Okay. Um, okay, here. What are some natural ways to help my son? I want him off stimulants. Well, ask his doctor to take him off next week. And please help with natural ways of helping, of helping him. He's 13 years old. Thanks in advance. Okay, how I'm gonna answer this question now. So this person wants to take his child off medication. I don't know what side effects or what's the purpose. Oh, maybe there's a lot of side effects that's affecting his child, her, his or her child. But um, there's several ways to do that. One is if the medications is kind of helping, but just having some side effects, you can work with the doctor to wean him off instead of taking him off completely. Because sometimes with the ADHD medication, depending on how long you have been on it, sometimes taking that, that medication off cold turkey can have more side effects. So you might want to actually um, talk about, um, talk with your doctor first and figure out how you want to do it. Because like I said, you can always just wean him off. So, but bump up on the natural side, which is mon um, like cleaning out the diet, eliminating potential food sensitivity stuff, and then taking supplements, vitamins, and then also doing like exercise and physical activities that actually helps to rebuild the brain tissues and connection. Those are the four things that I talk about inside my book or part of the Eat to Focus protocol. So you can go to my website or the blog and read more about the protocol or you can get the, the book and just follow along in the book and you'll see great results. And then the, when you start seeing better results, then you can slowly decrease the stimulant um, side of it. 
and actually a lot of the supplements that that is for ADHD actually helps to make the medication works better then that way you'll need less of the med medication but it's just funny how how some doctors say oh yeah taking zinc actually helps the medication works better but instead of saying that the zinc is helping they, they said that it makes the medication works better but probably it's because the zinc is correcting something in the brain so you don't need as much medication now so think of it that way um okay oh maybe this is the question that i was trying to answer earlier with your smarty pants kids complete multi that has omega-3 omega in it should i give an additional omega-3 supplement so i answered that question already and the answer is yes you need additional one because unless you want to take 15 of the gummies every day okay not this one uh here i'm gonna start the whole food gluten-free dairy-free diet for my kids the day after easter yay right after all the candy my goal is a five-week trial i know longer is better but this is what i can mentally commit to right now not sure what <coughs> excuse me not sure what results i'm expecting as far as behaviors but at a minimum both my kids complain of stomach problem so hoping it will help at least that for the past few weeks i've been stocking stop piling my freezer with gluten-free dairy-free meals and snacks to help my success any other tips to help me prepare okay so sounds like um the way this person posed this question sounds like this is kind of a challenging thing for her and the family i think it's her yeah so huh. I'm going to take some time to answer this. So anytime making diet change, people often think of it, especially when I read this post from parents, they think of a diet as something that, okay, today's the day, throw everything out and start all fresh with this new diet. You don't need to do that because you're when you come into try and make a lifestyle change with that kind of mentality, thinking that your diet before and this new diet, you're gonna fail in the short in the long run because you already have that mindset that you're gonna start something that is not you but what you can do even better is slowly ease into this new eating lifestyle and she's talking about like piling up her freezer with gluten-free and dairy-free meals so i'm not sure if it's something that is packaged meals that she buy from the store or is it something that she cooked from scratch because the whole idea of eating healthy is actually integrating this new eating lifestyle into part of your family part of you so when you try to rely on all these convenient things and not really truly understanding what's the purpose and why are you doing this you're going to go back bounce back to what what you used to be it's kind of like a rubber band and that's kind of the way that she's explaining the situation is she's going to stretch for the next five weeks so if you you probably know how rubber bands work so you have a rubber band you stretch 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 stretch, stretch until you can stretch more and when you release and let go it bounces back to work the original size so you don't want to do that you don't want to make this new eating lifestyle feel like a stretch where you feels like oh okay just four more weeks okay three more weeks two more weeks you don't want to have that kind of mentality you want to ease into this eating lifestyle enjoying it feeling like oh wow this is amazing i feel so good i'm so proud of myself i can definitely do this every day so you start with small little steps so and there's a lot of like naturally naturally gluten-free and dairy-free food that you can use you don't have to rely on a lot of store store of factory prepared food because the thing is people often think that dairy free and dairy free food packaged food is healthier but it is not it's just the same as any other processed food that is made from a factory that have a lot of additives added to it so like naturally very naturally dairy free and 
dairy-free and gluten-free food are things like any kind of animal protein so like your meat your steak chicken turkey pork fish turkeys lobsters all those are naturally dairy-free and then a lot of your fruits and vegetables obviously they're all dairy-free and then nuts and seeds nuts seeds and beans they're all totally dairy-free and gluten-free so there's a lot of healthy food natural healthy food they're all dairy-free um so try to avoid getting things like gluten-free crackers or gluten-free chips and things like that because it's just another processed food with a lot of stuff that your body don't need so instead of eating chips or things like that for a snack actually i have a whole whole snack um block um article out there that maybe i'll find it later and post it for you guys but um yeah there's all these like very natural alternative not alternative but natural food that are dairy free and gluten free and if you really want to you can even just look up the paleo diet because the paleo diet is actually gluten free and dairy free as well but it still have things like eggs and beans that um, you or your child might still be sensitive to but it's a good start just remember you don't have to just go t cold turkey and do something that you don't enjoy the whole idea is that the reason why you're eating the way that you are now is because you enjoy it right so you have to make the new eating lifestyle just as enjoyable as less stress as much as possible because if every day you're dragging oh i have to eat that thing again oh i have to cook again you're not going to keep doing this you might see some success in the first couple of weeks but then you always always go back to where you were before and then um the other part of the question is she didn't mention about her kids having stomach pain so stomach pain again it's just like any other thing else is the symptoms so so then you have to kind of look um the best way to figure out what causes the stomach pain especially if you're suspecting that is um caused by the diet or caused by the food is to do a food journal writing down everything that your child eats for the whole day for a couple of days at least for one week writing everything down what time they eat that food and then, then writing down what time they complain of the belly aches and things like that or if the belly aches get better after they poop or or any other event because sometimes a lot of times tummy pains can be caused by food but there could also be the emotional side like stress can trigger stomach pain something like um, we see a lot in little kids especially in my population because I work in a military hospital work with a um, family who moves around a lot so a lot of kids have kids um, in those kind of situation tends to have a lot of anxiety and adjustment disorder things like that so they tend to show up with more abdominal pain or they call it functional abdominal pain because there's no obvious cause to it but it's more like an emotional and stress trigger um, so those are also things to kind of watch um, yeah so yeah the trial and I think I answered most of it um, oh, the other thing, so she mentioned about gluten-free, dairy-free. So gluten-free and dairy-free is actually a very good place to start. And inside my book or in the Eat to Focus protocol, the first step that I talk about is actually an elimination clean start diet that is a little bit, um, take the, the elimination a little bit further. So it's actually dairy-free, gluten-free, eggs-free, grain-free, and... Yeah, I think that's about it. So it, or, or a few more things, or maybe beans free as well because of the the phytic acid, acid and the other stuff in it. So yeah, the eat to focus elimination protocol is a little bit more, more restrictive than that. But, but if anything, I'll say just start with gluten free and dairy free. You'll see so much improvement just removing those two things. But like I said in regard to answering this question is try to limit um, processed food as much as possible as well even though they're dairy free and gluten free okay um, okay i'm just gonna 
be reading you know what i might actually stop answering question i'll answer this this last one quickly and i'll talk about a few of the supplements that i usually recommend for this population okay my son always react to even natural sugar fruits etc for for example have small bowl of watermelon tonight and was talking like he was on speed and running around like a madman is the craziest thing why is this okay didn't say how old the child is so anytime that you react to food chances is something in the food is causing the reaction and again i talk about it all the time about food allergies there are food allergies, true food allergy that actually activate the immune system, which is the IgE mediator. There's also IgG and IgA and IgI, I think. Yeah, something like that. But so those show up in your blood test and usually those kind of reaction will always manifest as physical manifestation like rash, skin rash, um, breathing problems, swelling of the face and things like that. But the ones that we very, very commonly see in kids with ADHD are the more subtle type of it's not, not so much re, um, allergic reaction because they don't trigger an actual immune response, but more a reaction, more, I would say, a chemical reaction. Like my daughter many, many years ago, like a few times after I picked her from daycare, she was doing exactly that, like talking like a thousand miles an hour which she never does and then she just get all hyper talking so fast i was like oh my god what's wrong with you today and that happened for a couple of days after i picked her up from school so i was like i started asking the the teacher after the after school teacher what they were doing so i came to find out it was pepperoni that she was eating that's causing that so she definitely have some reaction to whatever that stuff that is in the pepperoni so we stopped that pepperoni at all because um we don't even eat pepperoni at home so and funny thing is pepperoni is one of the things that she likes and you also find a lot of that in your children who who kind of almost like gravitates and love the food that causes the most reaction in them so in this case in this person's case she's talking about mostly with sugar and natural sugar so usually with adhd i have an article that talks about sugar but sugar itself can actually stimulate the brain reward center similar to the way um, cocaine stimulate the brain and makes you want more but in this case it's natural sugar that is in fruit the fructose so it could be multiple reasons it could be the sugar itself giving that extra energy stimulating the reward center or whatever but there might also be a chance that it is the intestine or the the gut in the intestine that is a little bit off she didn't mention about whether a child have any problem with the intestinal issue or things like that but anytime we talk about sugar in association with behavior and ADHD, we're thinking of how the sugar affecting the brain chemicals and also how the sugar affecting the gut's bacteria. Because the bacteria in the gut, they, they don't just sit there and digest our food or, or do whatever they do there. One of the job that bacteria do in our gut is actually making, making brain chemicals. So there is this whole like new science coming on that talks about the brain as the second gut, no, the gut as the second brain. So your first brain and the second brain down here. So that's why like there's so much focus on gut health because we now know that the bacteria in our intestine is actually making quite a bit of our brain chemicals and people talk about like gut feelings all the times. It's because our gut do give us some of the feelings and that's through the brain chemicals in there. So knowing that, then um, the recommendation for her will be like, try to take, again, do a food journal for like about a week, writing down everything and how the child react. Then, then over that one week, you should be able to pinpoint a few food that your child might be experiencing and based on the symptoms like you can actually figure out what's causing what and why it's causing what and if you need help with that just um send me a message or schedule a free call with me and i can help you figure that out okay 
I think I'm, that's all I'm going to answer for questions because I want to kind of focus on the supplements today because people ask that all the time. So I mentioned about the omega-3 fatty acid earlier. So it's again the Carson's brand and it's because all you need is just 5 ml or 1 teaspoon a day and you get 800 milligrams of EPA, EPA 800 milligrams of EPA and 500 milligrams of the DHA. The second supplements that I recommend for anyone starting on um, this whole ADHD journey as part of the healthy diet, if you do a gluten-free, dairy-free, that's wonderful. Or if you're doing the Eat to Focus protocol um, elimination clean start, that's amazing as well. So the second supplement that I'll recommend is actually a magnesium supplement because that's definitely something that is low on a lot of kids and even adults with ADHD or actually people in general tends to be low in um, magnesium. And I used to recommend like fill other supplements like the cow, but actually I don't like that anymore because anything that you drink and they put flavorings in it is just not good. But if it's something that only thing that your child will drink go for it but what i recommend right now a lot every day in my office is this thing called concentrates it's a trace mineral drops and the reason why i like this is because you might or might not be able to see the labels i'll try my best okay the reason why i like to use this is because you know this bottle I think this is eight ounce bottle lasts me like forever all you need is only half a teaspoon so half a teaspoon which is like two and a half ml a day that's all you need for the whole day and you get 200 milligrams of magnesium but in addition to magnesium you also get other minerals like a little bit of um, the other ones are pretty negligible but you get a tiny little bit of something like uh, lithium and boron in it and lithium like some of you might know that lithium is a medication that helps with I think bipolar not that it'll help with your kids bipolar but it's something that will also help calm the nerves as well so this is a good one and all I do like I don't pour out like this is not meant to pour on a spoon and take it usually I just take my cup uh, I'm not gonna pour it in here or I might this is actually my coffee still but usually I just open this I leave this next to my cup and then I just drop that in there and then I just drink my water and that's it and I do this all day long anytime I I put my um, refill my my cup with water I just pour a couple drops in it and I just take it like that that's number two Number three supplements that I recommend is the zinc. Um, I'll talk about this, this swallow pill first. So with zinc, I'm not too, too really picky about which brand it is. Um, but this is the brand that I like. It's called Integrative Zinc, Car Car Zinc Carnal Zinc. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so the reason why I like this is because first of all, it has 16 milligrams of 16 milligrams of zinc, and I believe that's elemental zinc because it's 16 milligrams, not like 220 milligrams, something like that. So that's elemental zinc, and all you need is just one pill. And the carnal zinc, you might be thinking, what is carnal zinc? So carnosine is something that is needed for the intestine, for digestion and absorption. So that's why I like this. And this is um, actually the zinc. Uh, this is actually zinc carnosine itself. So it's not the chelated. But this is actually a really good product to use. Because it's not only good for um, the, the missing. Because... One reason why you want to do zinc supplement is that kids with ADHD tends to be low on that, especially if they've been on a very highly processed diet, processed food diet that have almost no zinc in the diet. Definitely, this will be a good one to use. And also, when your digestion is not very well, the carnosine definitely helps with making some of the digestive enzymes, make things a little bit more digestible and easier to absorb, and then helps along the way. But if your kids 
don't like to swallow pills like this and actually this is a very tiny little pill like I this one is an empty bottle but the pill is really tiny but the other option that I often use for zinc for my kids patient is actually the zinc elderberry Sumbacus. Sumbacus is the brand if you go to my website you'll be able to find that um, list and I'll put it in the comment underneath later as well or if you're on Instagram you can go to the the link in the bio and that should take you to the the long shopping list that have all my recommendations in there um, oh and then the other thing we'll think is that if you have a picky eater especially if your picky eater complains that your smooth your food tastes funny smell funny definitely a zinc supplement is gonna help so look into this so that's number three number four is um the number four supplements that i always recommend will be a vitamin b so some of you might have read about like b6 b12 those are all important vitamin b's but vitamin b's there are nine different type of vitamin b's out there so instead of trying to pick and choose which one to take I recommend to take all nine and the ones this brand is the one that I've been taking for years and I've been recommending this to my patient as well for years this is from pure genomics no pure encapsulation and the name is pure genomics B complex this is the one that I just really like and if you look at the ingredients they're all super high dose vitamin B's and um, most of you if you know vitamin B is a is a water soluble vitamin that if your body don't use it it comes out but um hopefully it's not going to come out but it's going into good use the thing is a lot of the recommendation out there the government recommendation for a lot of the vitamins and minerals are actually on the low end and the recommendation is given at that level to prevent deficiency so reading if you read through all my blogs and articles and things like that we talk about kids and adults with adhd have a lot of deficiency so our purpose is not to prevent deficiency our purpose is to correct deficiency so basically you have an empty bucket that needs to be filled up so following the, the recommendation is fine if your nor your level is normal but we're trying to fill up an empty empty container so you'll notice that a lot of the numbers are here in is in the hundreds and thousands of the recommendation which is totally fine because the other thing too is you're not just only filling up an empty bucket but you're also your bucket has a hole in it and the reason why i say that is because when you're in constant stress mental stress physical stress all of that actually increase your magnesium and your zinc uh, magnesium and your B B vitamins um, usage so even though some um, some of you might not think that you're getting enough but you might actually be using it just as much in the day-to-day -day, um, activity so um, it's something that no one's ever really talk about they don't realize that when you're in a constant stress day like sitting in traffic trying to get good grades in school dealing with bullies or trying to to get along and fit in all that pressure and stress can actually increase your nutrients usage like nutrients not so much calories but um, more like the the vitamins and minerals so definitely this one is the one that I oh the other reason why I recommend this particular one is because all the vitamin B's are actually in the methylated version you don't get all the junk things like the folic acid or the cyanocobalamin or things like that it's all in the meth meth methylated version my tongue is stuck today okay the very last one there's still many other ones that is out there that is beneficial but like i said these are i think the five i think the five that i recommend usually so the last one is actually a probiotic so like i mentioned earlier we've been talking about how the brain and the guts is connected and the brain is being the second second brain making a lot of our um our brain chemicals that support the brain so we're gonna put the good bacteria in so um people often try to take probiotics or take yogurt and thinking that they're getting getting some good stuff but a lot of times 
yogurt you don't get as much benefit and again we're trying to correct something so we'll have to use something higher dose more potent and um and fermented food is wonderful if you you have good gut bacteria ready so it's just more of a maintenance thing but to correct you need something a little bit more high potency so i would recommend at least at least fifty thousand or fifty billions cfu and this one actually is in two pills like i'm not too picky about what kind of bacteria is in these things i just care about the 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 dosage because you need to have that much because if your bacteria because there is something like trillions of ba bacteria in your intestine and you gotta put like a few couple couple tiny little bits not gonna do anything you want to invade your intestines so you can do that with like a 50 50 billion so this one actually a serving is two capsules so rather than taking the two capsules all in one time i would recommend actually taking one like in the morning and then maybe one in the evening so you kind of have a even spread out and this to me it doesn't really matter if you take it with food or without but, um some people recommend to take it with food but to me it's not that important more important is you actually remember to take it so whenever you remember take it just take it don't don't be like oh my god i need food i need to take it with food just take it um the only thing i recommend to take it with food is iron supplement because that does burn your stomach if you don't eat it with food yeah so yep this is the one probiotics and i think you, i think i got this one from from amazon it's probably in my shopping list as well so anyway so that's it that's all the things i want to talk about today and sorry for the delay just something <laughs> i hope it's not my laptop but um facebook obviously working here so but anyway so i'll put the link in the comment on both sides and then i'll talk to you guys again next week okay bye have a good saturday there. Okay, how did I finish?